everybody, Sarah here. So today we are going to be talking about Spectre and Heliconia and all of these very weird, interesting sort of ghosty morphs that um, are a bit of a mystery to some of us. So before we jump in, I just want to thank all of our members who are on this channel who help support everything. You guys are amazing. If anybody else would like to become a member, you can click join down below to see the perks. Actually, the perks are going to be over here. Uh, and if you would like to become a member, it would really uh, help me out a lot. Uh, and if you don't, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but you do get your own video every single week if you are a member. Quick thank you to Reptilinks as well for helping to support this channel. If you would like to help support me and also get good food for your snakes, you can use my code SarahSnake27 at checkout at reptilinks.com. All the links for everything are in the description. Uh, also, I have a website, sarahsnakeshop.com, where I sell corn snakes and corn snake accessories. So if you are looking for a corn snake, I pretty much have corn snakes available all year round. So today we are talking about Spectre, the very interesting line bred ghost morph that has been floating around for a long, long time, but is actually kind of a mystery still to us a bit. So Spectre has been around, at least to my knowledge, since at least 2005. And I'm going to just read uh, from what Donovan Winterberg has told me about this line. Donovan did, I want to say, the most work on this line back when it was first starting kind of to be popular. In fact, I think he was the name, the one who named uh, all of these different morphs. So um, I'm just going to read this uh, word for word. Donovan Winterberg said this to me. Now, Donovan, I don't think is in the hobby anymore. Um, so don't go bother him unless you want art. He does amazing art. The majority of the art behind me was done by him. So this one here, this one, this one, uh, let's see this one, this, all of these three here were done by him. Uh, this was partially done by him. Not completely. Um, I think he drew the outlines and then it was painted by someone else. And then, uh, he did this one, he did that and he did that. So if you are interested in snake art, he's the one to go to. Uh, however, this is what he has told me. I'm just going to read verbatim a message that he sent to me when I was asking about this whole thing. So, uh, the Spectre Corns originated from a pair of Kathy Love's special project known as the Naples Ghost uh, that I purchased from her in the 2005 Daytona show. I've been both consistently reproducing them as well as outcrossing them to other morphs. Keep in mind, this was in 2013 that he sent me this message. So this is not a new message. This was back when he still had all of the snakes. So far, I proved them to be at least allelic with the standard ghost corns, which is hypomelanistic plus anerythristic, but I'm also not ruling out nor confirming any additional genes just yet. Most have a very intense pink ground color, although it's difficult to photograph, much like the coral and salmon ghosts. However, specters also have thick black borders and saddles. So just as an aside, it's very uh, unusual for hypomelanistics to have thick borders, especially that dark. He said black in, in bold letters, like they are jet black. Uh, and yet they are still considered to be a hypomelanistic type. So that's very unusual for a hypomelanistic type one to have any black on it at all but two for uh, anything that's within our realm of hypo type a strawberry and christmas those usually have very thin borders like don't normally retain thick borders so that is one reason that specter is so different from the other mutations that we have the other ghost mutations that we have. other characteristics include a waxy shine very saturated colors and bright yellow inside the saddles so another aside, um, I have personally figured that that is actually green blotch. So what I believe we are talking about here with the specter is that we have a sort of red factor going on, causing it to be pink. And we also have the green blotch causing the inside of those saddles to be the yellowy olive tones that they have. This does not 100% carry over to every single one of them, which to me says that yes, it is actually one of these dominant mutations. The fact that some specters that I've seen definitely do not have any of these, this like yellow in the saddles. In my opinion, that's what's happening here. Uh, this was back before we knew what all mutations were involved. So right now it is definitely believed that we have anerythristic type A or typical anerythristic. I believe that we have a coral um some sort of red factor that's causing the pink in the ground color and i also believe that the originals were green blotched we also know we have some type of hypomelanistic that is at least related to our typical hypo type a uh could be the same might not be uh the head markings also do not extend to the neck that is also a very very common thing you'll kind of see 
the the head pattern just sort of stops now this actually reminds me a lot of the old bartley line ghosts um if i was to try to recreate the look of a specter i would start with bartley lines ghost and just add halo and coral into it and i think that they would look exactly like specter i'm not 100 percent sure of that but um the bartley line was a thing a long time ago they don't bartley reptiles does not have them anymore um, but I do still have a few photos. I'm hoping that I'll find them and put them up here. Although they are pretty identical at hatching, I've also noticed another phenotype in this line that I named Banshees. Like the matriarch of this line, these two-toned high contrast corns with deep chocolate colored saddles on an ashy gray background. So uh, we have our ashy gray background, which is pretty typical in most of the anorectoristic types, most of the ghost types. And again, um, if you remove that red factor, that is something that may happen. Um, he did mention the chocolate cover color in the saddles. Um, now, it is now thought that Banshee corns were probably red coat anneries, so that means red coat was probably in here as well. And so, in my opinion, once again, that's what's happening. We have now red coat on top of red factor, which are two different mutations. Um, and that is mixing with the uh, green blotched and that's what's causing that. Again, I can't confirm any of this. Whether these are genetically different from the rest remains to be determined. Again, this was back in 2013. Now I think we probably know. Next year, I hope to have some F2s from F crossing, from crossing F2s uh, to Banshees and other morphs. I did get some interesting results from pairing Spectre to Sunkissed. Back in 2014, uh, between 2014 and 2015, he pretty much let go of the entire Spectre project and the rest of his snakes in general were sold shortly after. After that, a lot of people who had purchased from him started breeding them into coral lines. So we talked about how they were extra pink anyway, and people thought that maybe they would look extra good in coral lines. And that is where the Heliconia came in. So I hope that you enjoyed this deep dive into the Spectre and Heliconia and all of that. And there's a little bit of Banshee, like all of that going on. Um, again, I inserted my opinions and my comments in all of this. So keep, just take whatever with whatever grain of salt you want. Um, I wanted you guys to get the story straight from Donovan. So that's why I just read off the message to you and just inserted my opinions as someone who like pretty much specializes in corn snake morphs. So, um... If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And if there's any morphs that you're curious about that you would like a video on, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share. I'll see you in the next one.